good morning children today we are going to do lesson 9 of your reader unusual friends you have already done the reading of this lesson uh, today i am going to explain this lesson to you now children you all have friends and how do you make friends normally you make friends with those children who have similar tastes likes and dislikes like you right however our story is based on unusual friends like two people or two animals who can never be together yet they are friends like you see in this picture a dog and a cat sitting together is it possible normally a dog will always chase a cat but here you can see they are sitting like close friends ah uh, tom and jerry a cat and a mouse in fact our story is based on two such animals who are unusual friends here we see a uh, a, a turtle a frog and a snail together in one picture again very unusual friends children did you know this wolf and bear pair were documented traveling hunting and sharing food together for 10 days so again very unusual pair of friends right now we come to our story our story now you all seen the cartoon tom and jerry how they keep fighting and uh, tom keeps running after jerry and jerry tries to escape well that is because they are supposed to be enemies but in our story we have a cat and a mouse who tried to be friends now whether they were successful or not we we'll come to know through this story so once upon a time there was a cat who wanted to be friends with a mouse but the mouse was not sure whether they could be friends because why because the mouse did not trust the cat so the cat was like come on i am also lonely and you are also lonely and winter is coming and children uh, for winters normally what happens animals gather food you know because it is very difficult to find food in the winter months and so what these uh, most of the animals do they collect food during summer and uh, autumn and spring season and store it for winter so the cat said to the mouse that look it's going to be very cold soon and dark and we can keep each other company and we can also help each other find food so let us be friends so the mouse said i know what you mean by food now why did the mouse say that because generally the mouse is supposed to be the cat's food so it's okay you want to be friends with me one fine day you will just eat me up So nonsense said the cat. I love you too much for that. I'm not going to eat you. Anyways children after much persuasion you know like the cat kept begging ki come on be my friend the mouse agreed to set up house with the cat set up house to start living together. So they found a nice cottage and they cleaned it up and then started the task of gathering food for winter. so the mouse suggested that a pot of dripping would be healthy you know uh, children dripping is like the fat which melts from meat when you cook uh, meat then the the fat drips from it and that fat is collected in a bottle so that is known as dripping so the mouse felt that a pot of dripping would be healthy for them and the cat agreed to it so they started searching for it and finally they were successful in stealing a pot of dripping from an eating place they must have gone to some restaurant and found a pot and they picked it up from there they stole it and then where did they hide it children they went and hid it under the altar of a church you know they went to a church where there was this altar and underneath that they hid their pot of dripping because they were sure that nobody would find it there now the mouse told the cat that look we must not touch this nobody is going to eat it till such time it is very cold 
and we can't find food anywhere else. And the cat agreed, yes, yes, it's going to be our secret store. And uh, we will always come together. Whenever we want to eat, we'll come together. So that was the promise they made to each other. They settled down into their lives. Although the mouse kept a watchful eye. Why? Because he was not sure whether the cat was actually going to be his friend. And what if one fine day the cat got hungry and decided to eat him up? So the mouse was always careful and alert. Luckily, the cat behaved herself and life was peaceful. Now, just uh, not even a month had passed and the cat started dreaming about that pot of dripping, you know. And uh, so she thought, let me just go and check. So she made excuses to the mouse and quietly went to the altar to see if it was still there. And what happened when she saw the pot of dripping? It made her drool. Children, when you see something very tasty, what happens? Your mouth starts watering. That is known as drooling. So the cat thought, let me just taste a little. Now, the cat returned home feeling a sense of guilt. Now, when you do something wrong, children, don't you feel guilty? So the cat also felt a little guilty because she had done something wrong. She had broken her promise to the mouse that they would not touch the dripping until it was winter. The mouse suspected nothing. He asked how her day had been and she said that, oh, it was fine. I had gone to the church uh, where a little baby was being named. So the mouse asked, okay, what was the name of the baby? And the cat said, top off. What a strange name, the mouse exclaimed. Why do you think, children, the cat named the baby Top Off? Because the top part of the dripping was off. It had been eaten up by the cat. Anyways, they continued living together. Again, after a few days passed, the cat could not forget that hidden pot of dripping. And she says, you know, she was finding reasons to go to that pot again. She says, what if someone else finds it? What if someone else eats it? And so, again, she told a lie to the mouse. She lied. She said she has to visit a friend who lived near the church and that she would be back soon. Again, what happened? The cat had another serving of the dripping. Serving means he, she again ate some part of the dripping. In fact, she ate so much that half the pot was empty. And then she was very happy, satisfied. Ah, the best things in life are the things you keep to yourself, she said. When she returned home, the mouse was waiting for her anxiously. He was worried that why hadn't the cat come back? And she cat told her, told the mouse that her friend was quite well and that now she had a pretty baby named half gone. Again, why was the baby half gone? Because she had eaten up half the pot of dripping. So the mouse was like, your friends keep very strange names for babies. Anyways, again children, days passed and the cat just could not stop herself from eating that dripping. So she said, I should not leave the pot half empty. You know, it will get moldy. Moldy means spoiled, rotten. So, and my mummy has always told me that never leave a job half done. You should always complete your work. So again, this cat made excuses and visited the church. The dripping, of course, was fine. There was no mold over it. But again, the cat could not stop herself. And she finished eating the complete dripping. And then she licked her paws with satisfaction. And she was like, why do the best things in life don't last? She returned home feeling full and heavy. So the mouse asked her again, did you have a good time? Oh yes. In fact, she said, 
I ran into an old friend and she has a very cute baby named All Gone. So the mouse said, oh my God, you cats have the strangest names I've ever heard. So children, the days passed. It became very cold and it was becoming difficult to find food. So then the mouse said to the cat that let's go and eat a small serving of the dripping. The mouse was also worried, you know, do you think our pot will be safe? So the cat said, of course it will be absolutely safe. Uh, but the cat, you know, didn't want to go because she knew that the pot will be empty. So she said, uh, uh, but do you think we should go now? Let's wait for some time. We'll go when we just find that there is no food available. But after much persuasion by the mouse, the mouse insisted, no, no, we have to go now. It's very cold. It's becoming difficult to find food. So they went to the church. But what happened when they went under the altar? The mouse got a shock of his life. The pot was there, but it was empty. The mouse was furious, very angry. He shouted and he jumped in anger, you know. Top off, half gone and now all gone. This is what it is. You went and ate up the complete tripping. Now the cat, to stop the mouse from saying anything, pounced on the mouse, you know, jumped on the mouse, but the mouse ran away. So children, what happened? Finally, we see that they could not remain friends. When you are true friends, you are not supposed to cheat each other. But the cat was cheating the mouse all the time. And in the end, the cat wanted to eat up the mouse also. So, unusual friends is the story. And we see that they did not really remain friends. Now children, this story was a parable. What's a parable? It teaches us a moral lesson. And what is the lesson that we learn from this story? That there are certain laws of nature that are best left undisturbed. You know, nature has decided certain things. Say a tiger will eat a deer. So they cannot be friends. A cat will chase a mouse. They cannot be friends. So, I hope you enjoyed understanding the story unusual friends. Thank you. Have a nice day.